Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning back in. We are back in the workshop. Now, on Monday's video, I was talking about dual RCD boards and I made a mention, actually it's episode two. Uh, if you wanna go back, I'll leave a link for it up here. And I was talking about dual RCD boards and how I made a comment in that video saying that I don't necessarily think that dual RCD boards are fit for all applications and that there are many times where actually they're just not suitable and that was met with a little bit just a little bit of hostility so today in uh, Naji weekly we are going to be talking about that exact topic now to try to explain this in a sort of logical way because you can spend literally hours and hours and hours talking about this so we haven't got that much time well I certainly haven't so I'm going to break it down as simply as I can so we are going to discuss a little bit just about main switch boards, uh, dual RCD, high integrity, and some of the different types of RCDs and why you don't see some of them on certain types of boards. So that's the plan. Now, I must mention at any point, do me a favor. It does make a difference. Just give us a little tickle on the like button. All right, it actually does. I don't like begging for likes, but it actually does make a difference. All right, so I would appreciate it. Now, in terms of boards, if you imagine, and we come across, this is a scenario here. This is my interpretation of a main switch board, all right? Now, we've come across this scenario many, many times, okay? Someone at some point has fitted an older style board, okay, with just a main switch. Now, at some point in the future, Schlepp and Kovac Limited have gone into Betty Crocker's house and they've realized, oh dear, we don't have an RCD. So he thinks, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just, uh, I'll just take that main switch out and I'll just put an RCD there. And that cures my problem, right? Well, it, it kind of does. And it, you, you solve one problem, but you create about half a dozen other ones. By, fitting, by taking that main switch out, in fact, if I go to my drawer of crap, so that is a main switch, just for those viewers who don't know, that is a main switch, that is an RCD, okay? So let's assume that matey boy, Schlepp and Kovac Limited have gone in and they've swapped out a main switch and put an RCD in. The problem with that is, yes, you've protected all of those circuits with an RCD, which is great. You've now got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circuits that are protected by a 30 milliamp RCD but you haven't got any selectivity. You've got no um, discrimination between circuits. So this was where my argument on Monday's video started because yes, you protected them, but if, if Betty Crocker's coming down the stairs with her you know, tea tray with her ginger snaps, because that's what they all eat nowadays, if that RCD trips and she's in a big townhouse, she's gonna fall to the bottom of those stairs and snap her neck. Now. That could easily be argued that that just isn't suitable. You've not allowed, you've allowed no, you've got no discrimination between those circuits. So that's the first problem. You haven't got any discrimination. The second problem is when you add multiple MCBs onto one RCD, the more circuits you add, the more leakage you are going to start getting when you start plugging devices in, especially if it's on a socket circuit. So another scenario that we see an awful lot of is if you imagine a big townhouse, like a four-story townhouse, very common in London, you see them everywhere. The amount of times you come across a dual RCD board is unbelievable. They are not suitable for big houses. They don't work. The reason they don't work is because you've got one RCD protecting, same, same here, you've got eight circuits, all right? I'll stick with this one for a minute. We're gonna to get to this in a second. The more circuits that that RCD has to protect, the more leakage it has to try and accommodate. Now, if you've got kitchen sockets, you've got a living room, you've got probably four or five bedrooms upstairs, you probably, one of them, especially in London, has probably got a second kitchen. You try protecting all of that with a front end RCD, it's never gonna happen. That RCD will just trip because all devices by their own nature, washing machines, tumble dryers, dishwashers, fridge freezers, everything, every single, every, everything you plug in has leakage. Now, it might only be half a milliamp here and there, but if you go around all those sockets plugging in all these different things, that's half a milliamp, another half a milliamp, maybe two milliamps on one appliance. Before you know it, that RCD is designed to trip at 30 milliamps, right? Well, they never actually trip at 30. They always trip prematurely, which we've spoken about this in Monday's video. I find a 30 milliamp RCD normally trips at about 
24 milliamps, roughly. Now, you've got a big townhouse, you go plugging everything in, you're very quickly going to get up to that figure. It won't take you long, which is why I was suggesting it's always a good test when you go to a house, if you're doing a bit of fault finding, do a half load test, which will push 15 milliamps through. Because if it's pushing 15 milliamps through, well, the threshold was not all the time. It depends on, you know, it depends on the installation, but roughly between 21 to 24 milliamps, I find, is what normally trips an RCD. So if you do a half load test and it trips, you already know straight away you've got a leakage issue somewhere. And the amount of times I've seen it where you turn up to a property and there isn't actually a fault. The customer says my fuse ball keeps tripping, but actually it's just the quantity of stuff they've got plugged in. It isn't actually they've got a fault. It's just you've got one RCD which is protecting too many circuits. And this is where my argument with dual RCD boards come in. If you've got a big townhouse, which again isn't uncommon, you get them, you know, Birmingham, London, Manchester, big cities, you get big townhouses. And if you've got a big house and you go and whack a dual RCD board in, if you've got multiple circuits, I mean, that's a 14-way dual RCD that I've very crudely drawn there, which actually that one there is a 12-way, that chint, which you'll see in a second, is a 12-way dual RCD. But it's not uncommon to see those fitted. And half the time, they're just not suitable for the environment that you're fit. It's not that they're not suitable for the environment, they're just not up to the job. A much better solution would just be fit RCBOs. You get maximum circuit protection on every single circuit and you get far more selectivity. You get much more, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, discrimination, that's the word. You get far, that you've got, with this, if that RCD currently trips, it will turn off all of those circuits there. And if that one trips, it'll turn off all those circuits. Now, my main problem with this is that, again, if you've got a really big house, one of the things you're going to have an issue with is, let's say you go to, let's say, let's say you go to a house and fit a fuse board. You fit a, you fit a big, stonking 14 or a 16-way dual RCD board, and you pick it up from Screwfix or whatever for 60 quid. Lovely jubbly, right? You go to Betty Crocker's house because she's asked you to do a, a, a DB upgrade. You fit that bad boy, right? And it's a monster of a house, but you think, you know what? I'll do it on the cheap because dual RCD is fully compliant, right? You go and fit that. Two weeks later, she comes down the stairs with a hot cup of tea and the RCD trips because matey boy and his the husband upstairs, you know, Mr. Jones has decided to go and plug in, you know, all of his hi-fis and stereos and stuff. And because it's already powering eight circuits or however many, RCD trips, right? So there's no fault, it's just they're plugging in so much stuff. RCD trip, she falls to the bottom of the stairs, snaps her neck, she dies, right? Husband, understandably, is going to be a little bit angry, okay? And the problem with this is that this isn't me being, you know, elitist or snobbish or oh, I would never do that. It's just you've got to take into account who is the customer? What are they likely to do in that house? How much equipment do they have? You've got to take all of those things in. You can't just get, take a, a dual RCD board and just go and bang it in somewhere. Because honestly, if that customer has an accident, they will literally, all that will happen, I guarantee you, and there's a reg for this, there's a reg that will say, selectivity not achieved, safety concerns present. That's a C2, that's regulation 531.3.2. So if she falls to the bottom of her stairs, snaps her neck, she pops her clogs, right? You'll end up in a courtroom and all that will happen, they will just, they will literally turn, I'm not making this up, it is right there. They will just turn around and say, Mr. Naji, can you explain why uh, you didn't comply with regulation 531.3.2? Because you fitted that fuse board. Why didn't you comply with that reg? And there's another reg here, Mr. Naji, 536.4.1.4. Why didn't you comply with that one? That's all that will happen. And you've got, you literally have no, there's no argument. There is not a single argument that you could give that would justify it. You've gone against, you've gone straight against a regulation. It's as simple as that. It's not me being difficult or elitist or snobbish or whatever it is. If you're fitting it in a bungalow, chances are it will be okay. But, you know, the amount of people, the amount of buildings you see these fitted into, enormous townhouses, they never, they just, they trip for a pastime. And every time we do it, we just turn around with the same statement, fit, a main switch board and just fit RCBOs. And the problem literally clears like that. Now, the other thing which I think I meant, in fact, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in this video, in that video uh, episode two or a previous one, but I always get a lot of stick for it when I say it because it's like people think I'm lying, I'm not. If you go to Screwfix or any wholesaler and you pick up a dual RCD board, you'll get one of those RCDs, right? Now those 
Almost always, 95% of the time, will be a type AC RCD. That does not offer the same level of protection as what an RCBO does, okay? This is why I love RCBO boards. Other than the selectivity and discrimination stuff, they offer more protection. The reason why is because if you buy an RCBO, that almost always will be a type A. Now, an AC RCD like this one here that you buy for sort of 60 quid in a dual RCD board, that will offer you protection for AC leakage. So that is devices which just use AC. So things like immersion heater elements, things which are just, they're really crude items. Uh, old fashioned, you know, the older kettles, uh, immersion heaters, really simple cookers, stuff which basically use core elements basically to heat things. Really simple stuff. Now, when you consider that 90% of everything you have in your home is DC, that's not gonna offer you any protection anymore. Another reason why I don't like them. An RCBO is type A, almost always type A. They will give you protection for AC leakage, but they'll also give you protection for DC, and let me get this right, pulsating DC currents up to six milliamps, which is basically everything in your home nowadays, okay? So the protection that offers against an AC RCD, I mean, it's, there's no contest. They re they're just better. There's a couple of other different types. I won't bother going too far into them, but AC is basically for, like I said, it's just AC leakage. Type A is for DC pulsating currents up to six milliamps. And then you, I'll go on a little bit more. You get type B, which is, it gives you a protection for all of the above plus smooth DC currents up to 10 milliamps, okay? Type B is normally what you'll see on EV chargers, but although that said, if you buy Rolex chargers and stuff, they come with a type A fitted as standard. So you can swap it out for a type B if you need to, depending on the type of situation you're, you're in. Uh, you can get a type F as well, which I believe is something to do with um, different way. I actually don't know 100% what a type F is. It's quite a new one from my understanding. And I think it's something to do with uh, multi waveforms and stuff. It's quite, I, I actually don't know. So I'd be lying if I gave you an honest answer. But I think it's something to do with multi waveforms and AC compressors and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah, that's, the, <laughs> that's my understanding of it. So I actually don't know 100% what that is. But a, C, A, and B are the ones that typically most sparks out there, they're gonna come across those three. Probably see type B a lot more commonly in the next couple of months, next couple of years, when uh, EV charging especially really, really kicks off. Now, one last thing is that, and again, this just goes back to my sort of dislike of dual RCD. If you fit a type A, C, RCD, right? If that property has got things like um, PV on the roof or an EV charger outside or anything like that, one of the issues is that if, you know, if Schlepp has been out and fitted that EV pod and he's not bothered fitting an RCD to it, which I'd like to point out, you see surprisingly often, it's not an uncommon thing, unfortunately. If there is any DC leakage on those circuits, right, it will mask a fault on that ACRCD and it will mean the ACRCD won't trip under a fault condition. So DC leakage can mask a genuine fault on an ACRCD. So this is what I'm saying, you know, I get the whole budget thing. And look, we've, I fitted one uh, in some content a couple of months ago. I actually, dis, I, I pointed out my, you know, displeasure of fitting it. But sometimes, you know, we are all human. You've got to do what you've got to do. And sometimes you've got to flex to, you know, the customer's expectation versus reality. We've, you know, we've got, to, we've got to tread that line and we've got to give the customer as much protection as we can. But they've also got a budget they've got to be conscientious of. So it is a, it's a balancing act. But that's something to be aware of. DC leakage can affect the operation of an AC RCD. With a dual RCD board, all right, this one is chintz. Now, I, from my understanding, that is a screw fix. I don't know if it's a brand of screw fix, but it's what's sold in screw fix, all right? You can pick up that board right now. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an eight-way dual RCD board. And lo and behold, it is a type AC RCD, okay? You can pick that up. I think I picked that up the other day. I keep them. I keep one as just a spare in the unit, just in case we ever need it, because sometimes they're actually quite handy to fettle and pike your bits out of because it's actually cheaper to buy a whole board full a fully populated board than it is to buy all these bits individually so I keep one in the unit just because it, it may come in handy but you can pick that up for about 50 quid if they've got them on special so normally they're about 60 quid but if you look around you can get them for about 50 quid now 
that takes me very neatly onto these boards here. So that is just a main switch board. And these are what we generally tend to fit. This is actually a fuse box one. We bought a big bundle of them the other week. Um, we normally fit the Schneider ones, but we've just got some of these at the moment. Now, again, the great thing about these is you just fit RCBOs in. So you just fully populate it with RCBOs. It gives you total, total protection. You can pick up one of these. The, the actual blank board, I think, is somewhere in the region of about 30 quid. It's really, I mean, it's peanuts for what it is. Um, if you want one with surge, expect to pay an extra sort of 25 quid for the surge module, which sits on the end here. But the, the RCBOs themselves are these ones here. They don't have the earth fly lead tag. They've just got the blue neutral, all right? We won't have the argument of whether you should cut the neutral cord down or not. I think you should and just ferrule it afterwards, but whatever. You can buy these for about a tenner each if you look around online, okay? So you buy the board for 30, you can buy that board for about 30 quid if you don't want the surge device. Most places in London, you're not gonna need surge anyway but you can buy those for about a tenner, 12 quid max. That means you could populate this board here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 quid. You could populate that for about 110 quid if you did it on the cheap. So you can have a full RCBO board for 110 quid. Okay, this board's a little bit bigger, but you paid 60 quid for that board. Now, it just makes more sense to fit one of these. If the customer is gonna piss and moan at the difference between 50 quid for that board and 50 quid, you know, an extra 50 quid. They're not a customer you want anyway, you know? So it really, you know, it really doesn't, it's just not, I don't think it's a worthy argument anymore, the whole thing about cost. I just don't think it's an argument. Like I say, we do fit them occasionally if the customer, you know, if you can see the customer is really in a tight spot and, you know, you've used them before, they've used you before, they've always been good. But again, I only keep one on the shelf here. The fuse box ones I've got, you know, 14, I think on the shelf, 10, 12, 14, somewhere around there. We just use these a lot more. Also, if you're changing a board, that's also the one advantage. We won't get into the whole, should you do an EICR before a board change? We won't get into that. But if you do do a board change and there are faults and problems, much easier on an RCBO board than it is on a dual RCD. All right, there are, there are issues, there are, uh, what should we say? There are benefits for the installer, should we say, all right? But leave your thoughts and feedback below. If there's anything you want me to discuss or go into more detail on over on the board, put it below and let me know. Uh, otherwise, we will love you and leave you. See you on Monday.